Welcome to Cooking Classic. I'm Kathy Coslett. We are in the Kowalski Auditorium at the Culinary Arts Institute at Luzerne County Community College. And when I say we, I'm talking about Kathy Reppert. Kathy is a cake artist, and her studio is called Truly Scrumptious. It's on Wyoming Avenue in Kingston, Pennsylvania. So happy that you decided to join us. Oh, thanks for asking me, Kathy. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so you have to hear about this, because I bet there are a lot of you out there just like Kathy. Tell everybody how you started out. It wasn't baking at all. No, I, uh, I have, actually have an MBA majoring in accounting and I have a CPA <laughs> license, which is now in trust with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So I started my career as, a, as an accountant. As an accountant. Yeah. And as I understand the story, obviously as um, your daughter Caroline was growing up, you wanted to spend a little more time with her right. and so you put that in hold, put the license in trust, and here we are. Yes. <laughs> now, we were talking about this earlier. You've been baking, though, ever since you were a child. My mother really enjoyed cooking and baking, and let, I was the eldest of five children, uh -huh. and she encouraged us to you know, stand by her side while she was baking and cooking, and she gave us free reign in her kitchen. Started in my kitchen in Kingston, and uh, I was there for seven years until we outgrew it, and my husband and mm -hmm. I purchased... Um, a uh, commercial space on Wyoming Avenue in Kingston. Now, when you talk about outgrowing it, um, just give everybody a sense of what it was like in that little kitchen at home oh. and how many cakes you were putting, you were bringing out of that kitchen in a week. I remember, I was there, <laughs> I remember. You were one of my first clients. How uh. about that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. I mean, every week was different because it would depend upon the amount of artwork that I had right. to do. But I, I did, you know, a number of wedding cakes every week, but it took all day mm -hmm. to bake a wedding cake in my two uh, wall ovens, which right. were, even though they're both convection ovens, it took a long time. Okay. So you did mention, there was one thing you mentioned, you said artwork. So that's really important for everybody to know. We're going to draw this out and plan it before we get to that actual beautiful cake. But then there's this other person that's really involved in your business, and that's your husband, Dave, yes. correct? Yes, he is. And he's the engineer behind all of this. He helps me quite a bit. And there, there's a lot of physics involved in the stability of a cake. And so he helps me with that. And um, one of the cakes that we're going to take a look at, he, he designed the stand for, uh, for the cake, for the mannequin cake. And mm -hmm. um, uh, so I'm, I leave all that in his hands. And he also does the deliveries. And now we're going to show you after this break how far Kathy has come in this whole cake studio. And um, you're going to get a chance to try it, too. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Alyssa Fier, and I'm a culinary student here at LCCC with your culinary tip of the day. In cooking, we many times have to thicken sauces and soups. A roux is a popular thickening agent. To make a white roux, we use equal parts fat, usually butter, and flour. Once the butter is melted, you add the flour. You want to add the flour until it makes a thick paste. Then we will cook it briefly to get out that pasty taste. Okay, today we are thickening a, chi a chicken stock. Once you bring the stock to a boil, you leave a little bit of the roux on your whisk and just add it to the stock. You will then keep adding as much as you need until you reach the desired thickness.
As you can see, the roux we made has thickened the sauce to the desired thickness. And that's your culinary tip of the day. Bon appetit. Hello and welcome back to Cooking Classic. I'm Kathy Coslett and I am with Kathy Reppert from Truly Scrumptious in Kingston, Pennsylvania. And she is going to make a flourless chocolate cake. So if there's anybody out there that can eat gluten or chooses not to eat gluten, this is the cake for you. All right, I see the chocolate, but I'm going to guess that's not the first step. <laughs> no, the first step is to melt uh, butter and chocolate and we'll combine them. Okay. Um, and then we have eggs and, and cocoa powder, okay. and, as well as sugar that also goes into this. So we'll start with melting the butter. All right, I was going to say you can't forget the sugar, right? <laughs> and you know, Kathy is using a microwave, so for some of us this is really a good thing. So rather than doing everything on the stove, she's even simplifying this a little bit, you know, for all of us. So you can try this at home. All right, now this is, imp this is an important step, isn't it, that you're adding the butter to the chocolate? Yeah, it'll help. Uh, I mean, over the chocolate, like right. we don't want to do this the other way around. Right, it'll help start the melting process okay. a little bit. How many um, chocolate chips do you have in there? I don't mean you have to uh, count them one by one, but you I know think, what I mean. Uh, 12 ounces. 12 ounces? 12 okay. ounces of butter and 12 ounces of chocolate chip. Okay, chocolate chips, does it matter if it's milk chocolate, bittersweet? Um, I would, rec Dark. I would recommend a, uh, a semi-sweet. A semi-sweet, okay. Or, I mean, you could do it with a bittersweet. Okay. Okay, that looks really nice. Mm. And of course, chocolate always smells very good. <laughs> Add a little butter and mm. I think I'm gonna start using the whisk. I think okay. it'll, it'll help. Just bring, all, bring both ingredients together. Oh, so what are we, we I mean, obviously we're looking then for a velvety kind of yeah, look yeah, to this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that looks really nice. Okay, that so does. then we're going to add this to, to uh, the sugar. To the sugar, a cup and a half of sugar. So there's a cup and a half of sugar. Kathy's adding the mixed butter and chocolate. I have to get every last morsel Absolutely. of chocolate. Absolutely. <laughs> And then if no one was looking, we'd be dipping our <laughs> fingers and licking yes. and all of those wonderful things. Okay. Okay, we're just trying to um, you combine have to be the strong sugar. to do this? <laughs> a little bit, maybe? A little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, it's, it's coming together pretty nicely. Is this a, a recipe that do you think people tend to be a little bit afraid of? Oh, they say, I think Ooh, so. Flourless. And one of the reasons I chose this recipe is because in most flourless chocolate cakes, you have to separate the eggs and you have to beat the eggs uh -huh. into a meringue and fold oh, them boy. in separately, uh, okay. and then uh, beat the yolks with with the chocolate. Um, but with this recipe, you don't have to do that. Okay. So um, I just thought it might be a lot easier for people at home to try. Right. So after okay. you. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> so and we're headed, headed to the mixer. And it, and it truly is gluten-free, yes. as long as you check your chocolate, make sure it's not, um, it's not made in a facility that processes other wheat products. And that would tell you right on there in the allergen information, right. it'll right. say may contain, oftentimes it says soy, wheat, eggs, whatever. Mm -hmm. So just look for that. And other than that, we're good to go, aren't we? Right, so now we're gonna add nine, nine eggs, one at a time. Okay. One at a sort time? Of, sort of. <laughs> well, that's all right. It just helps uh, to do it that way so that the eggs are um, completely mixed in. Okay. So really, if, if two drop in, uh, like... It's not a like, big deal. It's okay. <laughs> no time out here. Yeah, yeah it's okay. fine. One thing you have to remember when you're doing a cake is to scrape the sides of the bowl mm -hmm. very frequently. So, um, because that you really need to have everything mixed mm -hmm. so well, correct? Yeah, yeah. And so we need to remain patient with this. Remember, <laughs> one at a time, <laughs> nine. Okay. 
So, uh, obviously, you've made the other type of flourless chocolate right. cake. You've tasted it. Right. Is there any difference, really, in the texture or the or the or the taste? Actually, I like the texture of this of better. This better, yeah. I think the result it it has better results. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, really, doing it this way, we we really shouldn't be afraid of making this. No, this I is agree. something that I that we I, can do. It's manageable. Yeah, yeah I think okay. so. There aren't many ingredients, and as long as you have a microwave and a mixer and an oven, you should be able to do it. And it's so. chocolate. <laughs> what more do you want? <laughs> right? Come on now. It's chocolate. Okay. Okay, we have two more yolks in here that are... Okay. There we go. Okay, I'm going to scrape down the sides. Okay, it's important to um, really scrape the bottom mm -hmm. because that's usually where the sugar gets <laughs> trapped. In everything, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So the last Taste step it. is uh, okay. we have to we have more chocolate. <laughs> so, more. So we're sifting. Um, uh, a cup and a half of cocoa okay. and um, our cocoa is imported and we actually combine two different types one is a Dutch processed and one is a brute so um, when we only use Dutch processed we didn't feel that it was um, strong enough it just didn't okay. give enough chocolate, chocolate flavor. flavor yeah so what is the difference with different chocolates um, from different parts of the world what do oh they do? <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, that's another show. <laughs> that's a whole other show. <laughs> it all tastes good. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Oh, it's Look at the way that's mixing. That's fabulous. Okay. And that was a cup and a half? Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. And when you see a recipe that says, um, like, a right. cup and a half of cocoa sifted. Mm -hmm. You measure it first, and then you sift it. So now about how long will this actually mix? Just a couple uh, minutes? Just a couple minutes until everything is um, incorporated. Okay, and so you'll scrape that again yeah. like you did before. Yeah. Getting down to the bottom <laughs> to make sure all the way to the bottom of this, because right. you see the way that is. Okay. All right, we're getting to the good part, you know, everybody. I would think these need to come over now. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. I like to put um, parchment paper down on my work surface because when I clean up, it's um, much easier. And some people actually weigh the pans before they okay. put them in the oven, so that's something else you can oh, do too. Oh, okay. So... Um, so about how many scoops do you think that would actually be, based on your experience? Uh, it would probably be about five, five per pan. Okay. So. so if you're doing this at home, then you'll know that. Okay. I bet you've made enough of these, <laughs> though, that you might be able to eyeball the scoops, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And these are eight-inch round pans, and we um, we put parchment paper at the bottom and a cooking spray, nonstick cooking spray. Okay. okay. Now, would it matter in terms of baking or anything if they were Teflon-coated pans or anything, I, or would you don't use those? I don't use them. I, I really and you like would recommend that other people do not. Well. I mean, if that's what you have, that's what you have. Yeah. But, so I, is there anything they should look for if they're doing that in I, terms of bake, the baking process? I prefer stainless. Okay. Um, I, I just think that the results are better. Okay. And some of the Teflon is dark, so yeah. the pan tends to get very hot. Okay. And overbake something. Okay. So um, the other thing that we do is that we put our oven at 300 degrees. Um, we just get better results. Hmm. Um, with our cakes, and that it takes a little. Oh, sure. And it takes a little bit longer to cook, but uh -huh. or to bake, but um, 
Uh, we don't have to worry about the dryness, drying mm -hmm. out the cakes. And uh, we also sometimes put a, a water bath in the oven to keep moisture in, okay. in the oven. So um, we don't like dry cakes. <laughs> there you go. So, so how would you go about doing that? Uh, the water bath. You oh, put we it put in a, a pan. A pan inside at the very and put bottom. on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So it, it keeps the, the oven moist. All right. That's so. a great idea. All so, right. Can I help you here? Sure. There we go. Okay. I'll pass. How's that? Okay. And then we try to stagger the pans so that right. um, the air that's in the oven. Uh, let's put this here. Okay. Oh, let me do this. There we go. So that um, it can circulate yeah, it then can all circulate. around. Now we're going to bake these for about 25 minutes, but about halfway through, um, we turn the pans. Okay. So that everything bakes evenly. All right. So. We're going to come back, leave these bake, and we have another recipe for you, one you're not going to want to miss. Take my <laughs> word for it. See you in a minute. I don't know why you wouldn't have, because up next we are making, this is Kathy Reppard from Truly Scrumptious in Kingston, and she is about to make a double chocolate peanut butter bark. So how about that? <laughs> and I see this big glass jar of peanut butter here. How much yeah, peanut butter? Um, about a pound. <laughs> wow, a and, pound. And a pound of white chocolate. Okay. So what have you done here with this, actually? Um, we, we melted the peanut butter and the white chocolate together okay. and mixed them together. And you, did, you melted this in the microwave, right. too. Yes. So Kathy's trying to keep this really simple for all of us. Okay. <laughs> um, this is done in three stages. You just, um, in order to prepare the pan, you use a piece of parchment with some spray again. Right. So and, there's just a cooking spray right, over the parchment. Right. So we're going to put this in. There we go. This is the bottom layer. It, it looks so good and it really smells good. It, it, wait until you do this at home. <laughs> it's just three ingredients. That's it. So, so our three ingredients, obviously, peanut butter, white chocolate, and, and dark, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, right. So you can use semi-sweet or bittersweet or milk chocolate, you know, whatever your family likes to do. <laughs> it's like mouth-watering. I don't know about you, but this is like... <laughs> Okay, so that's, that's phase one. And then phase two is that we take eight ounces of, we use semi-sweet chocolate. Okay. And uh, we just kind of drizzle it over what's already there. Okay. I think and it doesn't have to be perfect, no, correct? No, no, it's very organic. You can <laughs> do it any, any way you want. That's my goal in life, not to be perfect in anything. So now it's <laughs> organic. I'm going to be organic. <laughs> Okay. This too was melted in the microwave, right? right? And just be careful that you don't overdo it, correct? Right. Kathy says you will know if you overcook the chocolate, right? Oh, so, that's beautiful. Here we so go. So you just take a little knife and go up and down. And this, okay. um, this looks this so neat. It. And it makes a pretty pattern. It does. So. It really does. And then I do it this way too, just so that we mix that darker chocolate with, with the peanut butter. <laughs> this is, I mean, other than being simple for people like me and other people out there watching or you need a dessert in kind of a hurry, it's a good thing to do with kids too, isn't it? Oh, sure. Yeah. A and, great introduction. And then we have two ounces of white chocolate that oh we just drizzle goodness. on top. This is decadent. This is, the, this is it. It is very decadent. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. You know, but it's fun, like around mm -hmm. the holidays, and it's, uh, it's not too hard to do. Oh, that, would, that makes me think, too. This would be a good gift, wouldn't it? Yeah, it really would be. You can put it in a nice box. Okay. So, um, 
So we'll do the same thing with the white chocolate. Okay, so I guess it really wouldn't matter either if you got, it doesn't matter how it comes out of the pan either, no, correct? No, no. Um, you have to refrigerate this overnight. Okay. And then um, it comes out of the pan very easily. And then you just cut it into small pieces with a, a pretty okay. big knife. Okay. So. It really looks beautiful. I know it's not, I mean, that's not the idea that it's supposed to be this gorgeous looking dessert, but it really is. Yeah, it's it's amazing and yeah. it is simple. All right, Kathy, thank you very much. Now remember, we have that flourless chocolate cake in the oven. So this is going to head to the refrigerator. When we come back, out comes the cake and on to the next step there. See you in a few. Make your life better by degrees. Choose from over 100 academic and career programs. Go to an accredited college at the area's lowest tuition. Earn your degree or transfer your credits to a four-year college or university. Take your life to the next level. Achieve your career goals and reach your fullest potential at Luzerne County Community College. Thinking of taking it to the next level? Make it happen! Luzerne County Community College offers a quality education at an affordable price. It's the best choice when you're trying to make something of yourself. Luzerne County Community College makes it happen. Classic, and I am with Kathy Reppert from Truly Scrumptious. She is finishing up, putting the finishing touches on this flourless chocolate cake. So, you would have wished you were here in between during this break because <laughs> I've had great tastes going on here. Chocolate and Bailey's, correct? Yes. Okay. And it's a buttercream? Yeah, it's our buttercream, which, which we make with um, egg whites, pasteurized egg whites, uh -huh sugar, uh, cooked over simmering water, and then we beat it to a meringue. Oh my goodness. And then we add butter and pure vanilla extract. And with this, we add chocolate ganache and Bailey's. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's incredible. So now, Kathy scooped this into a pastry bag, correct? Yes. Okay, and she's taken one of the eight inch rounds to that flourless chocolate cake, and you have actually outlined and made um, like a dam, okay. um, we, we do this with just about all of our fillings so that um, the, the filling doesn't ooze out of the, okay. the layers of cake. And tell us again what's in the filling. You know, I was so <laughs> hung up on this part of it, I forgot to talk about that. Tell us. Well, it's chocolate ganache, which is um, heavy cream, which is heated, mm -hmm. and it's poured over chocolate chips or oh uh, other chocolate. And we usually add like a teeny tiny, like a ta tablespoon of... Um, of butter okay. just to make the, the mixing a little bit easier okay. and make it shiny, so. <laughs> All right. All right, so we'll do the next. So you add a little bit of butter to make it shiny? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now these um, eight inch rounds were lined with a parchment and a cooking spray. Yes. All right. Now one of the things that. Um, there we go. That I like to do when I have trouble getting um, a layer out of a pan like that. Uh -huh. I'll turn on uh, the stove top just on low mm -hmm. and I'll put the pan right on the flame oh my goodness. for about five seconds. And then okay. the butter will melt that is All at right. the bottom of the pan. So the so uh, it'll then release that right, cake. Right. Ah, oh, smart thinking. <laughs> now we know why she does this and we don't, right? All right, so now we're going to repeat the process, right, correct? Right. So here we go. Here mm -hmm. you do it. Okay. I don't want to ruin the routine. Huh? All right. So is there a special technique to using these pastry tubes? Like, um, I, you know, you fill it to a certain point, right. and then you twisted it, and then how much pressure are you putting on it? Much when you're actually no, getting not, it? Not too much. You okay. don't want to overfill the bag because okay. the 
uh, buttercream will come out at the top. All right, that's then, not a good thing, is it? Because then you might have to eat it, and then you'll just be eating more buttercream and more buttercream, and then there won't be room for a cake. Right, and the other thing that uh, might happen is that you, you might not have control of the pastry bag. Yeah, that's bag. what I was concerned. You know, because uh, needless to say, that's happened to me. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, I would probably put this in the refrigerator for a couple minutes because okay. the buttercream is so soft, soft right now. Soft, yeah. Okay. Um, so, but before All I right. do that, I'm taking an offset spatula. Uh huh. And I'm just um, there we go. trying to smooth this into a crumb coating. Okay. All right, well, why don't we take a break? We'll put that in the refrigerator. When we come back, we'll finish up, and I guess we're just gonna have to taste everything, aren't we? <laughs> I don't know, it's, really, it's a hard job, but somebody has to do it. All right, we'll see you in a minute. life better by degrees. Choose from over 100 academic and career programs at the area's lowest tuition. Achieve your career goals and reach your fullest potential at Luzerne County Community College. back and we are finally at the point that we've been waiting for. It's the taste testing time. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy Reppert from Truly Scrumptious in Kingston. Kathy has provided us and made today a flourless chocolate cake and she has also made a double chocolate peanut butter bark. You can get both recipes on our website, the Cooking Classic website right here at Luzerne County Community College. And we just want to make sure you know one thing. When you make this cake, just don't expect the skewer to come out clean that you um, test it with. First time around, it may look like this, kind of fudgy, but you know it's finished when there's just a couple of crumbs left on. So thank you very much. I'm really sorry that you can't taste this, but I can. Thank you again, <laughs> Kathy, for sharing your talents, and thank you for joining us. See you next time.